For today's double review, we have two games that don't exactly care about telling their stories in a linear fashion with 3 minutes till 8 and Slay the Princess. Three Minutes Till Eight is an adventure game where you are stuck in a time loop. You wake up at 7.33 on the dot in your apartment with no memory as to how you got here or what is going on. Time is only moving forward exactly one minute every time you move from room to room. And at, of course, three minutes till eight, you die. Doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter what you're doing, as soon as that clock strikes 7.57, you are done and the loop repeats. Your mission is to figure out how you are looping, how to stop it, and why this is strangely going on only for you. So this is an adventure game where essentially your 24 minutes of play, or 24 minutes of time, is locked in terms of what you can and can't do in it. At specific points in terms of time, certain events will play out the same way every time. And similar to when we played Deathloop, your ultimate goal is to try and figure out the quote-unquote perfect loop in terms of what items you need, what events you need to do, what things you must interact with, given your kind of 24 interaction limit. There are multiple endings, and the game does feature a kind of, I guess, persistent element that as you go forward in the story, you'll be able to start your loop with more and more items. This will allow you to basically get further in or allow you to reduce going to specific screens, aka giving you more time to go somewhere else. The story is certainly intriguing. I did have a few kind of just general playability issues with this one. It did feel very slow to play. I would have loved the ability to kind of like speed up or instantly go to a door rather than waiting for the character to walk to and fro. Your journal slash quest log that keeps track of, or keeps track of anytime you learn something new or a clue, I would have liked that to remain kind of persistent across your loops as it to cut down on the need to memorize certain aspects of it. This one is an interesting game, and if you are looking for a kind of short form adventure game that's going to give you some kind of time travel twists along the way, I would give this one a check and see if you can enjoy doing the time warp again. And now we turn to the visual novel Slay the Princess. The story is quite simple. You are on a path to a cabin. There is a princess in there that you have been ordered to kill or the world will end. But of course, like with any of these circumstances, there is a lot more that meets the eye here. So this, again, is entirely a visual novel game, so no puzzle solving in the traditional sense here. Whatever choices you make in terms of how you interact with the princess or what you do will affect kind of the story going forward. And since the demo and basic plot has been reasonably said at this point, the idea is whatever decision you make will influence your quote-unquote princess for that particular part of the story. And each princess, of course, has their own personality, their own wants and needs, and their own ways of ruining your life. And the story itself is really well done. Again, the aesthetics focus more on still images with maybe some slight animations here and there, but it all delivers a very kind of spooky and mysterious circumstance. I also have to give a shout out to the voice actors uh, Jonathan Sims and Nicole Goodnight, who voice kind of the quote unquote main character and the princess respectively. They both do an exceptional job of delivering vastly different kind of portrayals of the characters based on what part of the story you're focusing on. And there is certainly a lot to dig into, and I really like how some of the choices that you make come back in an unusual way that you wouldn't tell otherwise. In terms of any issues I have with this one, my main story bit of complaint is that I would have loved to have seen kind of the choices you make 
have like a little bit more follow through, a little bit more kind of plot to them. But at the same time, considering the amount of lines and voice acting done, I could imagine any more additions to it would just massively increase the scope of this game. And yet, there is just a lot of things that, again, like I couldn't imagine how long it took to write and get all the voice acting done for the various routes. The quote-unquote, I guess, true ending or the ending does kind of wrap things up. Again, I can't tell you exactly how it does without ruining the trick, but I would have liked, again, some of the choices to have a little bit more permanence to them, but I also understand why they couldn't do that, given the nature and the overall themes of this game. So this, again, is a visual novel. So if you are looking for a really satisfying and very interesting and unique story to look at over a weekend, I would highly recommend this one. If a visual novel game is not your particular cup of tea, then this one may not do enough with its own unique twist to get you into it. But I did enjoy this one, and especially how far it kind of goes with the exact plot that it's trying to tell. So with that, we have another kind of two quickie story-driven games for our review. I would like to thank the developers of both for giving me access via press keys. If you'd like me to tickle your game for a future video and stream and all that, please get in touch. But I hope you enjoy the two very time-twisty tales for today. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to do the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my books wherever they are sold. Visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for detailed discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where some of the art and science of games.